major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening, it's Monday, April 27th, and thanks for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi. It was a day many have been waiting for, a day San Diego returned back to normal, as normal as can be during these times. Beaches reopened, but as for the economy, Governor Gavin Newsom says we're almost there. Also today, San Diego County health officials announced two more people died from COVID-19, bringing the death toll to 113. There are also 98 new cases, pushing the total past 3,100 cases. KPBS reporter Matt Andrew Bowen has the latest. Last weekend's sunny weather and the relaxation of beach closures in some cities and counties led to images like these in Newport Beach. Crowds of people lounging on the sand, not practicing social distancing. Governor Newsom says this is an example of what not to do if the state wants to reopen its economy quickly. He says California is weeks, not months, away from modifying its stay-at-home order. However, that's driven by data. It's driven by behavior. And as we change our behavior, we can impact the science, the health, and the data. This virus doesn't take the weekends off. This virus doesn't go home uh, because it's a beautiful sunny day uh, around our coasts. Meanwhile, the state is processing record numbers of unemployment claims. 15 million calls came into the unemployment call center last week alone. The state is starting a text message service to give folks another way to access help. But the system's software is outdated, something Newsom says he's been trying to get fixed. Uh, these things can't change overnight. But no, we're working day and night uh, to begin uh, to do justice to your expectations and your rightful demands for performance from the state of California and all of our partners at the local level. A big change is coming on Friday when San Diego County will start requiring facial coverings for when people go out and come into contact with others. In other words, it's probably going to be good to have something like this that you can pull up when you need to when you come in close contact, six feet of someone, and you can take it down when you're driving in the car or you're riding your bicycle or out uh, just getting some fresh air. Officials made clear the limited reopening of beaches and water access today is conditional. If people don't follow social distancing guidelines or if the virus starts to spread more quickly, beaches could close again. Small steps monitor the impact. If the impact is positive, then we can begin to take additional steps. If not, then we may have to pause where we are. If the impact is negative, we might have to turn the dial back. In other words, the path back to normal life is long and winding and largely determined by people's behavior. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. And as for San Diego beaches today, they were back open, but not without plenty of restrictions. But that didn't stop ocean-going crowds from finally getting their feet wet. KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman spent the day at the beach. Beautiful weather. I mean, oh my God, he just... He... Mark Presley has been surfing for more than 25 years in Mission Beach. This has been a rough ride. You know, we sneak in a few places up and down the coast, but not, you know, the dailies that we go out every day to go surf or every other day, you know. We haven't been able to do it. Today was a big day for him with all city of San Diego beaches reopening after weeks of closures. We're happy that the beaches are open again. Um, seems like everybody's practicing social distancing. Everybody's spread out. You know, everybody giving space. Really nice. The beaches are open, but there's no standing, sitting or stopping and a six feet social distance must be maintained. The stay at home order is still in effect. So the reason we have opened this area is we've given people the opportunity to come down get some exercise, and then head back home. And many San Diegans are taking advantage. We were so excited for the beach to open that we just decided to go for a long walk. We're like a mile and a half back down the way. I think a lot of people in San Diego, a lot of anxiety, and just being able to get back in the water is a great feeling. I'm just walking and enjoying the weather and like just 
happy that it's open again. And it's also awesome to like see that everyone's like kind of complying to the rules and stuff. A lot of families were out at the beach for the first time in weeks. It looks like a lot of people are distancing themselves, um, which is great. I like to see that. Um, yeah, we do want to stay away from many people as we can. There will be a learning curve for rules aimed at slowing the virus's spread. We heard it was the first day that everybody can come back on the beach, so I came to lay, lay on the beach, read a book, but the police officer said no laying on the beach. <laughs> Currently today, it appears to be that phase one is working. Phase two opens more space. So if we're doing well and the numbers look good, then they'll open more space to more activities. Any idea when that? No idea when that's going to be. Officials say if people cannot follow the rules, that they may have to be more restrictive, possibly even closing the beaches. Also, remember, after May 1, you're going to have to have one of these a face covering while you're out in public. Here at Mission Beach, Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. And here's a look at which beaches are open and those that remain closed. Remember, parking lots are still shut down. Sitting or laying down on the beach and gatherings are not allowed anywhere. For more information, go to kpbs.org. With a growing demand for testing, two new drive through test sites opened today, one in North County and the other in the South County. The new locations in Chula Vista and Escondido are only available by appointment or doctor referral. The free nasal swab tests are conducted by county public health nurses and the tests are sent to county public health labs. Results can take up to 48 hours. We'll do the testing in um, the person's car, so the nurse will be outside the car, reaching in, having the person turn towards us so that we can swab their nasal cavity and their, um, in their mouth as well. And the new sites are North Inland Live Well Center in Escondido, and the other is at the Live Well Center in Chula Vista. The county's first testing site at SDCCU Stadium in Mission Valley will continue. There are now two positive coronavirus cases among the homeless population who were sheltering at the convention center. That is among more than 660 tests given to residents, staff and volunteers. One of those positive patients was moved to a hotel room for quarantine while the second patient refused quarantine and left. Homeless outreach teams are trying to find that person for isolation. As more states outline plans to reopen, officials and businesses are still figuring out how to keep patrons from becoming patients. Whitney Wild has the latest from Washington. After Georgia's reopening over the weekend, I literally felt the burden being lifted off my shoulders. More states are looking to relaunch their economies. We need money. Colorado, Montana, and Minnesota are among those that plan to ease restrictions in coming days. In some cases, those decisions clash with data that doesn't yet show a sustained decline in confirmed coronavirus infections as recommended by the White House. In Colorado, cases are rising, but Governor Jared Polis is committing to reopening. We're encouraging that every Colorado new can works from home and every business that doesn't have to open right away uh, waits uh, a few weeks. Help is on the way for small businesses. Our business dropped roughly 50%. Our bank account just got wiped out immediately. Monday marks the first day owners can apply for another round of small business administration loans. After a $484 billion package enacted last week flooded cash into the program. As those owners breathe a sigh of relief, medical experts are holding their breath. Worried tests are too slow and too few. We have to realize that we have to have a breakthrough innovation in testing. Right now, you know, we're doing about 1.52 million per week. We probably should get up to twice that as we get into the next several weeks, and I think we will. In Washington, Whitney Wild, KPBS News. Nurses from Tri-City Medical Center and Palomar Health are protesting layoffs and furlough notices. Today, nurses from those facilities and the California Nurses Association held what they're calling a solidarity caravan. They circled Tri-City Medical and the Palomar Health Administration building. More than 150 nurses were laid off or received furlough notices. San Diego police are recommending the organizer of a reopen California protest to be charged for encouraging a gathering in violation of county health orders. Yesterday, hundreds were in Pacific Beach calling on the governor to lift the stay at home order. It was unclear if some were protesting the stay at home order or rather taking other political stances. 
SDPD says no one at the rally was cited for violating county health orders. The Chabad of Poway Synagogue held an online memorial service to honor the victims of an attack by a white supremacist that took place one year ago today. Rabbi Mendel Goldstein opened the memorial with a prayer for those who've fallen victim to the coronavirus pandemic. Goldstein and his children were in the synagogue on April 27th last year when a 19-year-old man entered with an assault rifle and started shooting. The gunman killed 60-year-old Lori Kay. Her husband, Howard, recalled her generosity. She helped all people of all nationalities, of all religions. She was the true universal yid. Everyone knew her in San Diego and in many parts of the world. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty for the gunman. His trial is scheduled to begin on June 2nd. While many jobs have been lost and others are now remote during the pandemic, farm workers have stayed out in hot fields, making sure San Diego stays fed. On Saturday, a group of community members showed these farm workers their appreciation. KPBS reporter Max Rivlin Nadler was there. Dozens of San Diego residents gathered outside a strawberry field in North County on Saturday morning. They were there to collect supplies such as face masks and detergents, and to show their appreciation for the farm workers, most of them immigrants, who have kept San Diego fed during the pandemic. Maria Figueroa is a North County resident who helped organize the appreciation event. The work of farm labor is essential, uh, more so today in this pandemic, and really every day, right, regardless of of global pandemic or not. And it's important for us to recognize that labor and to understand that we are individually and collectively dependent on farm labor and to feed us on the daily. One sign of support translated to, without you, we don't eat. With you, we shall triumph. Three separate caravans of cars went out to farms in Vista, Carlsbad, and Oceanside to show their appreciation to farm workers and to distribute the much needed supplies. Max Rivlin Nadler, KPBS News. The number of food insecure families in San Diego is rising. One program is helping people feed themselves now and later. KPBS producer Ben Lacey tells us how it might inspire a new generation of gardeners. Thank you, have a great day. It's a familiar sight in recent weeks, cars lined up by the dozens. This giveaway comes with something extra. Hi, would you like a plant for us to plant for a garden? Is your trunk open? Nan Sturman, host of the KPBS show A Growing Passion, is tapping a network of local growers, suppliers, and volunteers to make it happen. Thank you. We have created Grab and Grow Gardens, which are paper bag gardens. There are two seedlings in a paper bag with directions on how to grow your own fruits and vegetables in English and Spanish. One of the hosts for these distributions is Kitchens for Good, located at the Jacobs Center in Choyas View. Nan is also working with Healthy Day Partners. Its CEO and president, Mim Michalov, calls it a labor of love. Right now we're working out of my backyard and in my living room, and um, it takes quite a few hours to put together just um, even the 130 or 150 gardens that we brought here today. This absolutely came out of COVID-19. Mim and I were both very concerned about the people in the community who don't have enough food. Their goal is to provide not just a meal, but something families can do together. An activity to do with your children, to introduce children to growing and feeding themselves. There's a satisfaction to that that is, is very hard to put into words. One of the hundreds of children served by Kitchens for Good found a way. This sweet old girl, Mia, wrote this thank you note for your Kitchens for Good. Thank you for the grab and go garden. It was so fun to see the plants grow. The organizers of Grab and Grow Gardens say they plan to keep the program going through June. There you go. Have a great day. Ben Lacey, KPBS News. We're following all of the latest coronavirus developments for you at kpbs.org. Just click on the tracking COVID-19 link on our homepage, and then you'll be taken to a page with all of our recent reports. You can find that now at kpbs.org. 
A heat wave is bringing triple digit temperatures to the deserts over the next few days. Mark Mancuso has your forecast. Heat continues to be the top story here. The next couple of days, uh, the heat wave continues in the uh, inland areas. But along the coast, we've seen the marine layer thicken up. That means uh, some morning clouds and a little bit cooler near the coast. But it looks like a general cooling trend later in the week, even into the places that will be very hot as the ridge of high pressure starts to break down. Heat warnings are in effect uh, over here, San Diego County uh, deserts and over towards uh, the Coachella Valley. Uh, drink plenty of fluids in these areas. Stay in the air conditioning if you can. Near the coast tonight, we'll see more clouds cooling down to 57. Oceanside, El Cajon, 59. Brago Springs, a mild 69 degrees. Uh, for Tuesday, it's hot in the interior. Wow, look at all these cities here. That'll be getting close to record territory. Palm Springs uh, getting up above 100 degrees. Well, as we take a look at our temperatures, Brago Springs hits 103. Campo's up to 90. Near the coast, we'll see clouds and then some sun. A nice afternoon, ocean sides 76. And here you see San Diego at 78. As we take a look ahead, Tuesday and Wednesday, the hottest days in the interior here. Some spots could be 15 degrees or more above average. Look at highs will be threatened. Here's uh, the coastal five day outlook. Really not bad here, as we'll see temperatures uh, hovering mostly in the mid 70s. Going to the inland areas, uh, temperatures uh, about 10 degrees warmer or so, but still not bad. Temperatures uh, climbing to about uh, 83 to 85 through Friday. Heading up to the mountains, uh, should be more comfortable here. We'll be in the 70s next couple of days, later in the week. A little bit cooler back in the 60s and in the deserts. <laughs> it's really hot here next couple of days, but notice by the end of the week, it's not as hot. For KBBS News, I am meteorologist Mark Mancuso. Testing is a key part of guidelines set by state and county leaders for how and when we can lift coronavirus restrictions. But as KPBS science and technology reporter Shalina Chetlani tells us, it may not be a catch all solution. For most people, facing a pandemic is a new experience. But for Californians, there's a familiarity with this crisis because it's similar to fire season. The way we maintain coronavirus will be much like stopping fires from spreading, says Suma Chanda, a virologist at the Sanford Burnham Previs Medical Discovery Institute. You see these brush fires, right, and and and, and SDG and &E, and the fire departments are just surveying the backcountry. And as soon as one of these flares up, uh, they bring in the cavalry and they, they tamp that down. Chenda says without herd immunity, it's impossible to prevent these flare-ups from happening. Herd immunity occurs when enough people have become infected to develop antibodies that can fend off the virus. Or there's a vaccine so that people can become immune. Herd immunity is like clearing your backyard of brushes, okay? So every person that has uh, antibodies to the virus, either through the vaccine or being existed, uh, have uh, being uh, infected previously, um, those are people that can no longer burn. Social distancing has slowed down the rate of infections, but the problem is society has to open back up. Since the vaccine won't be developed for months to over a year, Chenda says vigorous testing is necessary now and especially when isolation ends. Essentially, either you're, you're Superman for the next year when it comes to COVID, or uh, you're a potential brush, brush fire and uh, you need to be contained as quickly as possible. Chenda says two main tests are used to show this. The first is a PCR or a polymerase chain reaction test. David Pride, a pathologist at UC San Diego says, this test is used to detect a number of viruses, which are- Basically like little organisms and, um, uh, you know, as I was sort of saying, a tiny amount of those little organisms can cause a lot of damage. PCR tests take genetic material like RNA from cells collected on swabs. Scientists sort of magnify these samples to detect trace amounts of the virus. Faster point of care tests with advanced instrumentation can deliver results in less than an hour. But PCR tests only diagnose whether someone has the virus now, not in the past. That's where a blood test comes in. These can detect antibodies, which shows that a person got infected in the past and were able to fight the infection off. 
We're not really trying to detect the virus in your blood. What we're trying to detect is your body's response to the virus uh, in your blood. Pride says these tests are important to show which people might be less vulnerable or less likely to spread the virus when they go back to work. It also means people who are immune may be able to donate their antibodies to people who aren't. Those are things that have been done for other infections in the past, like Ebola. Pride says a combination of these tests is key to monitoring coronavirus. PCR tests will show who's infected and needs to be in quarantine, while blood tests shows which people are less susceptible. But there's another factor that's necessary for these measures to keep fires from starting, says Michael Bush, director of the blood donation company Vitalin. And that's public participation. Okay, we want to, you know, test the, uh, you know, 300 million people in this country. You've got to get all those people sampled. You've got to get them to go into a, a laboratory or a clinic setting where they have their blood drawn. And early evidence from South Korea shows some people can get infected twice. Bush says while mass testing can squash a lot of flare-ups, it won't prevent all of them, which may require officials to implement policies like quarantine again. And Bush says it will take a while before the world returns to what was normal. The society will change. We're going to need to uh, continue to have some level of social distancing. It will not be as if all of a sudden we test everybody and the, the, the party's over. Until then, he says, there'll have to be active public participation alongside testing. That means lots of hand washing, limited public gatherings, and the need for people to monitor their symptoms. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. Multiple clinical trials are now underway to find effective treatments for COVID-19. New York hospitals are even studying a common heartburn drug as a potential option. Elizabeth Cohen has more. Could it be that a medicine on drugstore shelves might help in the fight against coronavirus? Doctors are trying to figure that out. Researchers in New York City are studying the active ingredient in Pepsid called famatidine. It's because of something doctors observed in China. Patients who were sick with COVID but were taking famotidine had a, had a better outcome. Now doctors at Northwell Health are trying it out in a clinical trial. You do the hard work. So far, they've enrolled 187 patients and expect preliminary results in a few weeks. There are many examples in the history of medicine where a drug that was designed for one purpose turns out to have an effect in another disease. But Dr. Tracy warned, don't rush out to buy heartburn medicine. The patients in the study are in the hospital, getting mega doses intravenously, and it's not clear that it will work. While the Northwell doctors work on famatidine, Dr. Anthony Fauci Saturday had some hopeful words for another drug, remdesivir, for animals with coronavirus. There was clinical benefit just reported a couple of weeks ago of SARS coronavirus 2 in rhesus macaques. And a doctor at the University of Nebraska saying results on a major remdesivir study in humans could be available in a week or two. Also over the weekend, the governor of Florida held a press conference where a doctor said 12 patients had done well on convalescent plasma. Antibodies from someone who's recovered from coronavirus are given to someone who's currently infected. And when we give it to that patient, um, we essentially are boosting their immune system to help fight this infection. This is going to be a, a huge uh, 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 game changer in uh, our armamentarium to fight COVID-19. But doctors warn having 12 patients who recovered doesn't necessarily mean very much, since most COVID-19 patients do recover. A larger study with a comparison group would be necessary. Only the best science to get treatments that really work for COVID patients and their families desperate for answers. That was Elizabeth Cohen reporting. With millions of Americans out of work and millions more having their hours cut, lenders are trying to help ease the strain. One bill that you could get help with, your mortgage. Mandy Gaither explains. For many Americans, the biggest bill we pay each month is our mortgage. But if you're one of the 22 million who were forced to file for unemployment in the last four weeks, you may not be able to make that payment. The government announced anyone with a federally backed home loan could delay or reduce their payments without fear of foreclosure if they've been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. And according to a mortgage banker survey, as of April 12th, almost 6% of home loans are in forbearance. 
but isn't right for you. The first thing to do is contact your mortgage servicer. Don't just stop paying. Second, find out if there are fees or interest attached. Then ask about your repayment options. Typically, it will be one of the following. One lump sum at the end of the forbearance period, pay extra each month until the amount is paid off, add suspended payments to the end of the loan or loan modification, have the amount rolled into loan balance. Depending on the terms, this could be the deciding factor if forbearance is worth it or not. But remember, don't wait. Work out a solution now if you haven't already. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. And just be aware this has a trickle-down effect because of the economic uncertainty. Some lenders are raising the bar for new mortgage applications. I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the News Hour, the U.S. nears one million confirmed cases of COVID-19 as another week under pandemic begins. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS. Now for an update on our top story. Governor Newsom is warning Californians to keep up with physical distancing as he says we may just be weeks away from lifting coronavirus related restrictions. Today, San Diego County health officials announced two more people died from the virus and 98 new cases. Some beaches across the county reopened this morning to swimmers and surfers, but no sitting or gatherings on the sand are allowed. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Good night. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following, 